Good afternoon, this is Joy Lagerie, your host today, and I have with me Thomas Banger, and he's going to be telling us uh, his story, his backstory, and all about his music, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get started, I'd like to get a shout out to the Luscious Moss Studio. It's owned and operated by Chad Christ in Edgewood, Washington, and he's primarily set up for drummers and guitarists, but lately he's been doing a lot of... Uh, uh, production for other artists and getting their music out there. So if you have any needs, you can find Chad on Facebook and Luscious Moss um, by going to search or through Facebook as well. So with that being said, <laughs> yeah. Oh, one last word. Yeah, it's a very creative and collaborative environment because I've been there and I can attest to that. So good afternoon. <laughs> Thomas, how in the world did you get started in music? You know, what a question. I mean, it's it's one of those things probably for any artist to just kind of there's something inside us that that is drawn to, yeah. to different things. And, and I, I think uh, when it comes to music, um, the furthest back I can remember ever being interested in music is when my mom, I mean, my mom is the most beautiful voice in the world. I'll tell you oh. what, and she used to sing to me when I was a baby. And so oh I my gosh. <laughs> from there, um, I think I understood music probably before I understood s spoken language. Um, so I think that was what cemented uh, kind of that musicality um, yeah. inside me, if you will. Um, and then, you know, I, I didn't really get into music as a kid. I think I asked for piano lessons and my mom said, you know, no, no, you know, for one reason or another. And then, um, you know, I did choir in high school and enjoyed that um, out at Marysville Pilchuck here. And then, and then um, when I ran off and joined the military, I, I kind of, I kind of, you know, my 21st birthday, I ended up at a blues bar in Alaska, in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> and, I've uh, been there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was this Blues Central is what it was called. It was in Anchorage, Alaska. It was a fantastic place. And and uh, went on my 21st birthday and did all the 21st birthday things, drank way too much, had a great time. And <laughs> yeah. there's this guy playing boogie woogie piano. And I, I went up to him and said, I have to learn how to play like you. And he said, yeah, come back when you're sober, you know. And and uh, I came back the next day, you know, I think hung over and, and he was working security at the door. I said, no, really, I want to learn, you know, I want to learn how to play. And uh, his exact words, I can, I'll teach you to boogie woogie. And uh, he taught me really? that the the Nashville number system and and, and everything. Yeah. And once I realized, you know, once I kind of understood the grammar, if you will, behind the the language a little bit better, um, I was able to kind of say those things musically that I've always wanted to say. Yeah. Um, so you didn't start earlier. You didn't start until you were twenty one. Yeah, I I picked up. I started picking up piano um, when I was twenty one. I, I I had enlisted in the Air Force and I'd gotten this enlistment bonus. And, you know, all your friends, you know, oh, you should invest it. You should know. I I, I, I blew it on a three-week hitchhike trip to Europe and a, and a nice Roland electric piano. <laughs> and uh, I locked myself in my apartment in, in Anchorage, Alaska, and just learned how to walk a bass line with my left hand and then learned how to, you know, learned how to play within, you know, play within the different scales uh, on my right hand and, and became obsessive about it and then would go to the blues jam. Uh, you know, I think it was Thursday nights or whatever it was. And <laughs> these musicians were, were so great, you know, gracious, you know, they could have, they could have said, Oh, this guy is, doesn't know what he's doing. We want to, you know, have a good real professional jam. And they'd let me get up and sing and they let me get up and play piano and make a fool of myself. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to them for that because they didn't have to do that. Um, yes. And I wouldn't have started in music without that. Were they, all, were they all military or were they Anchorage people or? They're all Anchorage people. So there, there are some folks like, um, you know, Tommy Cook and, uh, you know, Tommy Cook's in, uh, a drummer in town with like Polly uh Gosh, I'm going to script the name. Um, a great blues band I just heard uh, uh, this past weekend. Um, he was part of that crowd. I didn't know him then, but uh, uh, Rob Woolsey and his, his girlfriend, Veronica Page, they were kind of local legends, if you will, in that Anchorage scene. And there's a, a band up there called Rebel Blues. And uh, they, they, you know, do lots of kind of blues and rock stuff. And uh, they're still up there playing, you know, the, all the all the, the local places up there. Cool. Yeah. I, I did go to Anchorage. Um, my husband was stationed there, but um, I, I was in um, Fort Greeley area. Okay. For a little while. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I would love to go back. I mean, this time of oh, year, yeah. it's just beautiful, you know. Yeah. And 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 it, it's a heck of a heck of a music community up there as well. Wow, I didn't know that, but I I do know that it gets awful cold in the winter. I yeah. <laughs> I, I went there in May. I think it was April, May, somewhere in there. And uh, <laughs> there, yeah. I first of all, there were buffalo roaming around in the schoolyard. Oh wow! Moose, I'm uh, not buffalo. Moose. Moose. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, Moose walking across the freeway on the way yep. to Fairbanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the uh, sun was up until midnight. <laughs> oh my, yeah. Isn't that funny? I remember. I remember. I worked a six a.m. to six p.m. schedule, and and I remember you know heading driving around and going to Best Buy, and why are the doors closed? It's locked. And look down, and it's ten thirty at night. And like, oh, I got to get home and go to bed. You know. <laughs> I love I loved my time in Alaska. Yeah, it is be a very beautiful state. Yeah. So so starting at um, how long were you? Were you like four years in the military, or I spent about fourteen ish years or so in the military. I, I started off, you know, I was a knucklehead in high school. I quite if, if it weren't for the good grades I had in choir, I, I frankly probably wouldn't have graduated. <laughs> so, um, you know, I finished off there. I worked at McDonald's. I but I loved work. I never never loved school, but I loved work. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, God bless my mom. She said, hey, you know, I, I, I know you like working, but, you know, let's aim for something bigger. And uh, she, she convinced me to join the military, you know, a pretty, pretty awesome thing for a mom to do. And it gave me just enough discipline and, and direction, I think, to, to kind of screw my head on, I guess, a little bit tighter, if you will. What and, branch uh, were you in? Yeah, I was in the Air Force. Oh, okay. And they said, hey, do you want to learn Russian? I said, Russian? What? You know, <laughs> and they... Sent me to Monterey. They taught me Russian, and then I—that's oh that's how I made my way up to Alaska. And then somehow I—I uh, I was able to go from being enlisted to the officer side afterwards. And and uh, I loved it. I mean, it was it, it was it was what I needed as a as an individual to grow up a little bit. Yeah, I hear you. That's great. That's yeah. a good place. Yeah, it's a good if place. you've been in the army, though, they make men out of you. Right. They make, yeah, I know they, they, they I, I'm really just, I'm kind of a tall lanky boy still. I don't know if they're ever able to beat that out of me in the air force. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my husband, I'm always telling him, you know, if I can't bounce, my ex, my ex husband was Marine and I said, I can't bounce a quarter off the bed. You don't know how to make a bed. You're, you're air force. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I love it. I love it. Moving on to music. So you were there for how long in the military? Uh, so I was in the military about 14 years. I, Ooh, I was in. Now I was in, you said that. Wow. Yeah, I, I was. I was in a, uh, Anchorage, Alaska, for a couple years, and then somehow I somehow I made my way into the Air Force Academy. So I, I went through that program and uh, somehow didn't fail out of that and became an officer. But while <laughs> while at the Air Force Academy, that was after Anchorage. I just started learning how to play piano and and I uh, kind of got a, a classic rock slash funk kind of cover band and learned kind of what it was, what it meant to play with other musicians. Yeah. Um, you know, what it meant to, you know, what it meant to listen, if you will. Right. You know, be, being a musician is, is a, is a lot less about what you have to say than, than I think it is, you know, when you want to say it and, and, and how you're conversing with the musicians around you. And that was what I took away from that for sure. And, well, yeah. I, I have, I'm a rhythm player. So I always say you're only as good as the people around you. Oh, oh yeah. And, and gosh, there's something to be said about playing with people better than you. I'll, I'll tell you what, yes. you know, that's, that's a great, that's a great thing. Yes, absolutely. We've got a few comments here. Um, I have to remind people to put their names on here because we can't, all it says is Facebook users. So we don't know who you are to properly greet you. Oh but, yeah. Um, somebody said, welcome Thomas. I had put a note out there to welcome you. And they follow through. <laughs> oh, that was Rose Smith, I think. Said, yeah, well, you know her, Rosie? No, no I, 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 I just have a hunch. Oh, yeah. She goes out to the uh, wonderful Oxford a lot, and she comes out there when I'm out there. So Wonderful. Until we get to know our musicians more here. And so that's that was a comment made. I'm not sure who awesome. made that, but probably Rosie. No, that was Ellen. Ellen Harden. Oh, Ellen. you can see? You can so see I, who it is? I've, I'm cheating. I've got two screens pulled up, so I can uh, see the Facebook feed. But okay, Ellen's right. just the most. Uh, uh, 
Ellen's just the most beautiful human. She goes out to all the shows. She's always dancing her heart out and she's taking great video of everybody. She's as, as great of a, a music supporter as they come. Uh, hi, I'm glad you joined us. <laughs> What's her first name? Ellen? Did Ellen. Say? Yep. Ellen Harden. So hi, Ellen. I hope you come back. So we were left you 14 years in the Air Force. You're yep. by that time an officer. Mm -hmm. Were you stationed other places or, or? Yeah. So after, after making it through the Air Force Academy, I was back in Texas for a little while. I met a, a great, um, I played it some great musicians down in San Angelo, Texas, um, Jonathan Matthews and, and a bunch of folks who kind of rolled through there um, at a place called Sealy Flats it was a beautiful blues bar. Um, it was a hotel and blues bar and kind of the, the, the guys and gals who'd run through from, you know, Dallas to Austin to San Antonio, they'd stop through uh, San Angelo. I think I saw, you know, Samantha Fish go through there when she was kind of before she took off and John Nemeth and a bunch of kind of the blues folks um, on the scene go through there and, and uh, they let me open for them all the time, which was a great experience. Fun, um, yeah. And then I was in Southern Georgia, uh, just uh, Valdosta, Georgia on the, on basically on the Georgia, Florida border. I have a question before you get to Georgia. Yes. <laughs> Did you run into any country music when you were in the, in Texas? I mean, that's kind no. of a country music. Um, a little bit, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I did, but country, you know, I, I didn't get into country until a little bit after that. Um, yeah, yeah kind of, kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of it there, but I, I spent a lot, a lot of my time in, um, kind of a lot of my time really learning about the blues, trying to, trying to, you know, dive into, you know, the, yeah. everything from Robert Johnson up to Muddy Waters <laughs> and beyond. So gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then you went to Georgia, you said? Southern Georgia and uh at, so I was at, and moist. It was I, I remember getting off the plane from Afghanistan, getting off the plane, stepping out and thinking, oh my God, I I wish I were back in Afghanistan because it was <laughs> just, just it got so disgustingly hot in southern Georgia. Um, but it was great. There was a, a wonderful music hall in in outside of Aldosta called the Mount Zion Music Hall, and these Great human beings, uh, Jimmy Watkins and Tommy and and Fred. These you know old old veterans who who basically um, started this little music hall, and it was just a double wide that they they put a stage into, and um, would invite everybody over. And they'd had a house band that were you know everybody was great musicians, but but pretty modest in how they played. It was just old bluegrass and folk and country tunes, and that's where I kind of started to learn about some of the old country tunes. Uh, there was a, a gentleman named Donnie who I think passed last year who used to sing, you know, these these songs that I'd never heard before. Um, uh, and, and, and that kind of got my, you know, that that kind of got me, you know, looking into the country and Americana and kind of, you know, all that stuff. Um, so that's where I learned to play harmonica, really. I, I had my harmonicas with me by then. And, uh, you know, they all played guitar. I didn't play guitar yet. Um, I played piano, but it's hard to play piano in a bluegrass area. Um, <laughs> but I had my harmonicas, and so they would let me stumble and 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 trip my way through through the bluegrass tunes. They're all one, four, five tunes with you know maybe a minor two or six yeah, here. And, exactly. and and uh, that's really where I learned. I, I really learned how a harmonica worked. And uh, after Southern Georgia, I got out of the Air Air Force um, and moved to Southern California for a few years, uh, and I played. Played in a couple duos down there with a gentleman named Milo Sledge, who's a fantastic bluesman. Um, and then Teresa Russell, who's one of the most phenomenal guitarists you'll ever you'll ever see in your lifetime. I, I um, talk about uh, playing with somebody who's better than you. She's she's the most uh, insane talent I've, I've been around. And um, she was gracious enough, enough to let me play with her, uh, you know, whether it was two or three days a week. It was a lot of fun. And then yeah. I moved up here. Yeah. And yeah. this is where it's happening. <laughs> yeah, I love it here. I mean, gosh, especially this time of year. Yeah. You know, and, and the people up here, I came up here and met Raphael. Um, one of the very first people I met in this state in the musical community was Angela. So Angela is Raphael's girlfriend, Angela McCabe. I never met her. Was, was, her, was her name. Um, it's her birthday today, actually. So happy birthday, Angela, if you do hey. jump on. Happy birthday, um, Angela. They they kind of got the jam at the Madison started, um, 
and and they Angela kind of, you know, I reached out to her. I heard she was in the scene and she said, go to the Madison. You'll meet some people there. And that's where I met Raphael and Raphael. And I, I think took to each other really quickly and started playing around as a duo. Um, and then once I moved a little further North up to Mount Vernon, it, it came harder to play with Raph um, consistently because he's down in Everett and he spends a lot of time playing further South. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I've, I've been playing solo up here quite a bit and really enjoying um, opening up my solo repertoire, if you will, and, and kind of figuring out what that's about. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get up there and it's like, I just play straight rhythm. I don't do other yeah. fancy stuff. And I'm like, this got to be boring for them. <laughs> you know, oh, like, you know I, I don't know. I, I, so I mentioned Teresa Russell and, and she's like a phenomenal guitarist. So I think, you know, the guitar guitar center and the rock and roll hall of fame had a guitar, you know, electric guitar competition, you know, tournament, if you will. And they like cut the, cut the competition in half. And I think she made it into the top eight in the country or something like she's mind blowing, but you know, she, she's the one who encouraged me. She said, look, you know, you're, you're a great singer. So don't, 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 try to be anything you're not just be you and i used to complain you know oh these harmonica players they sound just like blues guys little walter i want to sound like that and she'd be like look you can try hard to sound like that or just sound like you yeah. and uh once i got that into my head i think um i mean music has just been so much fun since then <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah so we do have another comment you can see who, who put it there um, uh, I, all right I see Rose. Rose said, love learning more about the wonderful musicians we see in here. Oh, okay. I think we did that one, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. we repeated it Perfect. Day already. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, could I uh, get a, would you mind showing us your room there with your guitars? Oh, sure. Uh, not, my on, my I'm laptop, gonna... my camera is attached to my laptop, so I can't do too much. But oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to get out of here so that we can see. Okay. Oh yeah. I'll be back. All right. So yeah, this is this is where I sit and, and spend all my my time off work and and the guitar. I guess the um the the Gibson to the I guess it'd be to the right of the screen. Um, that was from my my lovely wife. It's a beautiful Gibson J two hundred that I I very rarely play out. It usually just stays in. Um, and then the electric guitar is a, a Fender that I, I actually bought from a man named Frank Goldwasser, um, also known as Paris Slim, who's a fantastic fantastic blues musician. Um, he just played the 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 Portland the the festival in Portland this past weekend with a, a harmonica player named R J Michu. Um, so I've got the electric guitar, then I've got my um my martin that's kind of my go-to uh i love it it it, it has everything i i could ever want or, or wish for out of a guitar um and then obviously there's the the hammond organ um this my baby i learned to play piano first and foremost and and used to lug this thing around to, to gigs uh all around colorado and texas and and even a little bit in georgia um i i i, I don't lug it around this much because I'm I'm pretty young, but but I feel old when I move that around to gigs. And then the little guitar all the way off there is is just a little hundred fifty dollar recording king and and a few other kind of knickknacks here and there. But yeah, this is my my happy place. Yes, I can see that. We yeah. have another comment. Maybe you can see who it's from. Yeah, Somebody Billy else. Appleton. Good to see some of the younger players out there and making their mark on the local music scene. That's very nice. I, I, uh, you know, Chris Eager, yeah, Savannah Woods, Spencer, yeah. There, there are some. Gosh, there are some really good musicians. And then Ellen, Ellen brought up uh, Joel Astley as well. And Joel's yeah, just a he's player. a harmonica player too. He's great. And and you know, all these people mentioned. I don't know. Um, I just don't know Spencer personally yet, but I, I'm sure it's I the do same, but, a little. <laughs> but, but like all these names on here are just great people, and, yeah. and I think that's right. I mean. That's really what it, I think it comes down to is just. Yeah, the very first person I met up in that area was Chris Aker. Yeah, yeah. You know, we decided to spend a little money and go to this winery uh, right on the, I don't know if that's a sound in Lacana or what, what it's by, but um, 
we were sitting in this beautiful uh, little place and Chris started playing and he had a looper. And he was oh, yeah. I haven't looper. seen him do that. Yeah. And he plays a really great tune. So that's, and uh, earlier I had been at a jam. There used to be a jam at CCR in Snohomish on Wednesday mm -hmm. nights. And I'd gone there and seen Chris there and he played yeah. a country song for me. And he actually knew the lead, lead in riffs uh, yeah. or whatever you want to call them. And, yeah. Um, and he, he was great. And then I went to the winery and after that I was sold. <laughs> I just, yeah. His music. And he's just a great guy. And, and, and like, yeah, he, he can play anything. And, and, you know, it's a rare musician who can, I mean, uh, I'll tell you what, like when, when people request songs from me, you may or may not get it, but you're going to get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to get it. Like I give it to you. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give it back to you with, 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 um, you know, as you heard on the recording, Chris will just belt it out. You know, he'll play all the lines as they are on the recording. I mean, he just has it in his head. And uh, it's so impressive to watch him do what he does. And not only is he good, you know, at what he does, he's good at what everybody else does too. Like he, he can, he can pick up any genre and you're like, you know, he sounds like he's been doing it forever. So anyway, enough, enough gushing over people. I, I can... yeah. And then there's Spencer Toys and he's up and coming and um, he's quite a talent. Yeah. He, he's playing country with um, Josh Collins. Now I don't know if he still is, but he was, he picked up the mandolin, which is not one of the things oh, that yeah. he plays. He plays drums, plays bass, and he's just a great guy. Um, he's been on here a couple of times. I'm going to look up Spencer. That's great. I, I don't, I'll admit with the day job and then the music, I, I don't get yeah. to see very many musicians, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm always excited. Well, and that kind of brings us around to, um, to when your first paying gig was. Um, Ooh. And what we were playing, and when in all this time did you pick up the guitar and start playing? Yeah, um, my first paying gig was probably, we'll say it was in Colorado Springs. I was at the Air Force Academy. I had just kind of, I didn't play guitar yet. Um, I had the the Hammond. I played piano, and uh, you know we're cadets, so the Air Force Academy. It's like right the Naval Academy in West Point. It's a right. Uh, you can't go do a whole lot um, as a freshman. You're you're not allowed to be in civilian clothes. It's a uh, it's it's a bit strict. And so, uh, however, um, all of my upperclassmen they needed a singer for their band. They had a band, and 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 I could sing. So they they let me bend a lot of the rules for them. Uh, so <laughs> cool. we we uh, I I became their singer and piano player. And 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 as a freshman, I'd be allowed to go put on my civilian clothes to go out and play a bar gig. Um, and because I'd been enlisted beforehand, I was older than everybody anyway, so I was allowed to get into the bars. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably my first paying gig. I think it was probably a bowling alley, um, <laughs> yeah. a bowling alley that had a bar. And uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 okay not going back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds cool. I, I that, so did you play the whole time that you were a cadet or? I did. I did. And, and it was wonderful. I mean, it's a stressful environment, um, right? They're trying to drive, you know, they're trying to drive that structure and discipline into you and, yeah. and everything internally wants to fight back. And music's a good little way to kind of stay human through all that. So <laughs> yeah. that's how I did it at least. Yeah. But you mentioned guitar. I mean, yeah. I, I started picking up a guitar probably, yeah, towards the end of um, my time at the Air Force Academy. And, and I, I think piano came on fairly quickly when I dedicated my time to it. Harmonica has been a journey, right? They're all, every instrument's a journey. Guitar has been the hardest for me. Um, right. I mean, this, the piano, everything's laid out, right? Yes. It's, 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 all, yes. it's all there. You can visualize it. <laughs> right. a harmonica, you, you've only got so many options, right? For, yes. for, for holes and each hole you can hit different tones on and in and, and different steps and, and whatnot. But a guitar everything's just layered on top of itself. It's 3d over three, you know, it, it, it took a lot of time and uh, you know, you kind of little, little things click here and there. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you when I, when I got this really? guitar, when I got that guitar, um, my Martin, a lot clicked for me. So sometimes it's having the right instrument as well. Um, yeah. And then once I got my, my Gibson, I think even more clicked for me. So it, it, it's, it's still a journey. I'm, 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 I'm good enough to be dangerous. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, 
I don't know if I'm I'm good enough to be dangerous, and 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 I, I rely on my vocals quite a bit. Um, that's yeah. what I do first and foremost. That's your first instrument. That is my first instrument. Is is uh, I, I'd be I feel like a little bit of a fraud when I play any other instrument, frankly. <laughs> it, uh, but I I am a singer, and that's yes. what I love to do. First, yes, yeah. I had a very hard time switching from piano to guitar, but I wow. wanted to do it because. I couldn't carry my piano to a campfire. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I got a 12 string and I haven't had one since. I've gotten a lot of guitars, but I haven't gotten a 12 string again. But I just bought one. I'm waiting for it. It's supposed to come tomorrow. Was that so? My first guitar was a 12 string. Yeah. So your, was your saying your first guitar was a 12 yeah, string? I can't oh, remember what it was, but yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And and I love Lead Belly and all this stuff he did, you know, all the early, you talk about early country. That yeah. was the right early, early country in blues. Right. And uh, him playing on the 12 string is just one of my absolute favorites. Okay. Well, I don't know how it's going to go. It's a Takamania. I've never had one. Oh, wow. That's, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm. I like Epiphones, so mm -hmm. <laughs> Fender and well, not Fender per se, but I have the Squire, which is a cheaper model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I don't make a lot of money in music. Yeah, but right. uh, yeah, that's I wonderful. Like I when do you when do you get your twelve string? You said it's on the way. Hopefully soon. He's supposed to be here tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, um, no. I'm like a kid at Christmas when that stuff's coming. I'm yeah, I'm know. always checking my phone or the mail or. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a story to tell. I ordered in December, in November. My husband said, "I saw this guitar with that old, kind of not tattered, but just just an old looking ancient flag on it, and I fell in love with it." And so my husband said, "Well, you can order from Amazon. They got it there." So I did. Oh, that's awesome! And there is a little round hole about the size of your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And all the way down into the wood on the darn thing at the top. And so oh. last night was the first night I got to play it because I took it to get repaired at a place called Mike Lull's in Bellevue. And they are, okay. they're really, a, they've been doing that kind of work for stars, guitars for a long time. Oh, wow. I'm not a star, but I had a guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and their son, his sons do it now. And they, they fix that so, so well. That you can't even see it. In oh, the meantime, wow. Amazon and Oscar Schmidt did not do right by me, but I I managed to get it done, and it was everybody liked the sound of it. So I guess I did the right thing. That's cool. Oh, that's exciting. So that brings us to um, what was going on for you? I don't know. When did you get out of service? I I kind of don't have that date in my mind to oh. know where you're at here. Yeah, I left the service. So I, I left active duty in about 20, 2013. Oh, and then I was, so I was 10 years. Yeah. yeah, a little while. But then I, I stayed in, in the reserve until in the reserves until 2018. Yeah. And then in 2018, when I moved to Washington, I just decided, hey, you know, you're either that's enough. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's enough. I'm, I'm ready to be here. But if they never ever need anybody who speaks Russian, guess who's going to go? <laughs> they yeah, I, I, I think those days are behind me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. You never know. <laughs> you never, you never know. <laughs> okay, so you've been out there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, where were you during COVID? What were you doing, and and uh, how did that go for you? Yeah, so I was uh, living in Everett, uh, right off of Grand Avenue, in an apartment. Um, when COVID hit, I, I, I work work at Boeing, like about half the population out here. Yeah, I hear everybody gets there. One. Yep, yep. So I was uh, there, and um, my then girlfriend, now wife, um, came down a little ill, and she was in California. So I moved up here, and and um, she was my girlfriend, but we were kind of, you know kind of on the fence of, you know, do we want to move forward with this? Do we, do we not want to? I don't know. And then uh, she got a little sick. So I flew down to be with her. And while I was down there, COVID hit, I had my work computer with me. Um, so I, I just worked from down there in her apartment and she got on the mend. And then we thought, God, what are we doing? Let's get you up here. So <sighs> moved her, moved her up uh, to Washington. I, I just moved her up in the summer. I said, it's like this all year long. Don't worry. Um, and then uh, she's been here with me ever since. So that's what I was doing over COVID was uh, 
trying to convince the love of my life to move up to Washington with me. You're a good convincer. She did it. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. We all get, we, we, we all get lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, did you, um, the way I understand it, you're a singer songwriter as well as, as a musician, correct? Yes. When did you start writing? So it, it, that's a pretty, your checks in the mail. That was a perfect segue, by the way. Um, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't ever write a song until I met my wife, um, my, my, my now wife. I was married previously, um, lovely woman, but just not the right thing for yeah. either of us. And um, um, I've, I've loved music, but I've just never, I had never been able to write music. It just, there was some sort of, it was like, it was like some sort of emotional musical colic where I just couldn't get it out. Right. And um, my, yeah, my, my, my wife, Antoinette, you know, just, our relationship kind of opened up a lot for me and uh, I wrote my first song down during COVID times while I was living with her I'm like, Oh, I can do this. Cool. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, kind of started going from there. And then once we moved up to Washington or once I moved her up with me to Washington during COVID, um, I bought just this little, you know, Scarlet, you know, recording device and got the, got the software and I'd be on work meetings, working from home and, I'd have 15 minutes between a meeting. I <laughs> yeah. sit down and, you know, grab my guitar and plug in and record yeah. something and go, go back to my meeting and I'm dying to listen to it, but I can't because I'm in a meeting. And <laughs> so I, I recorded most of that. My, my album, I think it came out in 21. Um, I called it Suburban Gospel, but I recorded most of that at my desk in my home in Lake Stevens at the time and, and uh, in between work meetings. Um, a couple songs I recorded with Raf in his in his studio basement as well. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I I once I met my wife, the the floodgates for music opened up for me when for singer songwriting, and uh, I've been going ever since. I've got more more songs written than I know what to do with, and now I'm releasing another album here in two How months. How can they find your music? How Where can they find your yep. music? Any, if you go on to, to Spotify or Amazon music or any of the, you know, any of the, the big places who, 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 uh, you know, store all that stuff. You look up Tom Banger, <coughs> pardon me. -E 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 -E. I know I need, I need a great moniker or something to, to, you know, it, it, I need to, I need to up my self promotion as well. I'm not good at that, but Tom Banger, B U E N G E R. It's all out there. Um, I just released a single, I think a month ago with Chris Eager and Richard Williams. Um, and then yeah, September 8th, I've got an album coming out and I've got Chris on there, Richard on there. Um, Teresa Russell, who I was telling you about. What's the name of it? It's called, it's called blues from Caucasia. Oh uh, yeah. I saw that. Okay. Yeah. Blues from Caucasia. Caucasia. And, what is that? I saw that and I thought, what is that? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just me. You know, I, I don't take myself too seriously, but I, I, you know, I really like the blues, but, but I, I, I kind of understand that I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm kind of a, uh, I don't own the blues. I'm just kind of making my way through it. If yeah. You will. But, but it's, it's informed, you know, it's a bit informed by my, my worldview. And I grew up, you know, somewhere between, you know, middle class ish, you know, uh, from, you know, the beach to, you know, wherever. And, and, uh, uh, my blues is informed by that. And so that's my Caucasia, if you will. Uh -huh. Um, but it's, it's, it's just a silly name. I mean, it, you know, it, it's a blues album, but I don't know. I, I, well, what does Caucasian mean? Caucasia. Well, it's like, I'm, I'm white and I'm Caucasian. But oh, where's, where, oh you know, it. really? Oh, yeah, it, it's a play. You know, it's yeah, it's a play on. It's a play on like the just you know wherever Caucasia would be, not the Caucasus, but it's just um, it. It, yeah, it's just me being kind of goofy and, and uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know about pr provocative, but but uh, I like I love the blues. Like I, I really mm -hmm. love good blues, but but I I'm not a big fan of. For me. I don't want to do anything that's too derivative from, you know, I don't want to repeat what's been done yeah. too many times. And and it's hard not to, right. As musicians, we're all right. just borrowing, borrowing, stealing from everybody around us anyway. But, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, I love the blues. I think this, this album is going to be a little bit different than most other blues you may have heard, but I still think you're going to listen to it and think, gosh, yeah, that's, that's a blues album. 
anyway. It's coming out in September on Spotify. Sep- September eighth. Oh, September eighth. Okay. Yes. Any yep. other, any other platforms or? Yeah, all basically anything that's a digital distribution, it'll be all, all over YouTube, okay. Music, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Yep. Yep. Okay. Should be. I'll should be. For it. Yep, you should be all out, out there. Something. You have to set out a notification on Matured Musicians so we know to look. I will. Yeah, I'll remember to do that. I, I really need to up my marketing. I'm, I'm, I am I love music and I love gigging. And, and I, I um, my wife's always saying, make sure you say who you are. Make sure you say where you're playing. I'm like, I'm just here playing, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I could really, you know, you mentioned Joel Astley. Somebody mentioned Joel yeah. Astley earlier. Yes, I did, yeah. I, I'm, you, I, I, you know. You talk about somebody who's who's really taken doing that. He's yeah. he's a great musician in in and of himself, and he's a great person. Artist, artist yeah. he's too. a great artist. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, you're right, um, right, um, visual artist as well. That's right. But he's put in so much. You know, pe- people don't think about the work it takes to do that, and and the, the work it takes to really put yourself out there, and and mm-hmm. and. Uh, I feel like I'm gushing over other musicians, but <laughs> I, I I admire him so much for the way he's yeah, been able he's to, to, to do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you from the time that you started this band that you were telling me that you were playing in the military as a cadet, where did you go from there? And how did you get here? <laughs> yeah. Where you are today? As a musician or just as a as a human? As a, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're connected. Um, um, but basically, how did you, um, after you got out and you, I, at some point you were out of that academy, yep. I don't know if the band went away or what happened, but yep. where that, from that end to where, where you are today, yep. um, how did that all come about? Sure. Yeah. So once we all graduate from the academy, we all go on our separate, you know, ways. My guitarist flies F-22s now. Oh no, my, it's my drummer. My drummer flies F-22s now. My guitarist is out and has his family, a bass player, you know, fantastic. Anyway, they're all all over the place now. Um, so I once I got out of the Air Force and moved to Southern California, um, I met with a gentleman named Milo, who I, I mentioned earlier, and he's a great blues musician, but kind of just getting back into gigging. And he played this, he plays this big old, used to play this big old silver tone, you know, the kind you get in a... Um, like a Sears catalog, big old silver tone, silver tone guitar. And it's like a, um, things like a battleship, you know, it's just this big, ugly, just thing. And so he was getting out into playing. So I, I grabbed my harmonicas and, and he grabbed his guitar and we bust a little bit. And then we kind of got a wine bar gig that was every Wednesday. And then we kind of got our brewery gig that was also once a month. And so we kind of just, I think we both learned a lot from each other there and then that's where I met Teresa and Teresa's a rocker. I mean, she'd play electric and just go crazy. And so that would expand even further. I'd be playing, you know, a uh, voodoo child on, on harmonica electrified. And it's just, you know, kind of expands a little bit more. Um, and she, yeah. And then once I moved up here to Washington, I lost those two to play with and, um, uh, really picked up the guitar and got really serious about learning more on the guitar so i could play solo and then how did you make connection between raphael and chris and and richard and yeah you know, raphael i met because um my stepfather who lives up here once he knew how i was moving up here he said hey i you know i, I on facebook or somewhere hey somebody told me you need to reach out to angela and <laughs> angela is the one who 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 raphael's girlfriend uh, uh, started the madison jam and so madison the Madison jam is probably where I first met anybody. Um, and then once I moved from Lake Stevens up to Mount Vernon, the Madison became a little bit far to make. Um, and so I, uh, I kind of just played solo for quite a while and only the past four or five months have I been more connected with Chris and Richard. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just getting to know them and they've been lovely. Um, Richard is just, you know, he, he, Richard's one of the most kind, you know, kind souls out there, you know, and I've done recording with him and, uh, you know, Chris has been willing to, to let me play music with him and, or him come play music with me. And, and it's felt good. Yeah. And so I think, 
because it's felt good for all involved. We just haven't stopped. Um, but I think, you know, who knows where the next yeah, year where it's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, we've got to get, I mean, I've got a gig with Chris and Richard. Um, oh, geez. Coming up here in the next, uh, this weekend, it's at, um, Bertelson, um, Friday, July 14th. We're opening okay. for Christian Bush. Who's one half of Sugarland. Um, so he's playing at Bertelson, uh, and we're opening for him. I think at where's five. this at? I don't recognize this name. So Bertelson Winery is is if you're driving up I five, it's it's right kind of before you get to Mount Vernon. It's on the right, and it's this big beautiful. Uh, what is it off of Starbird? Not Starbird like boat, but Star, you know, B I R D. Um, yeah, right off there, and it's a wonderful music venue. Um, they've been fantastic to me. They let you know I was playing there once a month. Um, you know, that's the best thing about playing music up here in Skagit County, in my opinion, at Snohomish as well, but I'm, I'll just use Skagit as the example is, is, um, just the people you meet when you get to play music and people you would never meet otherwise. Um, is it okay if I sidebar for just a moment? I'm going to yeah. sidebar. Yeah. Um, when I lived in California, um, there was a, um, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how I got, got. Oh, I was playing a, a gig with Milo at, at the wine bar, and, and I had this couple come in and said, hey, we're throwing a house party in a, in, a, in a month. I want you to play with this guy, John. He's going to be there. You've never met him, but I know you're going to get along. It's going to be great. I said, you sure? Yeah, just show up. Here's my address on this date. We'll pay you. Show up at the house party and play. And then I met John Payne and uh, fantastic guitarist in the Santa Barbara area, and we, we ended up playing you know however many house parties and you i made an entirely new group of friends just from that chance interaction playing a wine bar one night you know and there's something magical about that mm -hmm. just about how music will connect people who may not mm -hmm. on the surface have anything else in common it's, it's yeah. really it's really great cool. yeah so i do have more comments if you want to take a look at some of those um oh, i can't see who they are so maybe you can yeah, it's Ellen being sweet as usual. So I do a lot of gospel. <laughs> so she says, I love your gospel, honey. Yeah. And, and I, I do. I, I, um, I, I, I sure. And she said, amen as well. I think when I was mentioning Joel Astley, um, she brought uh, that up. Yeah, okay. um, and then uh, Rose was commenting to, to Billy's comment. Yeah. Who uh, just said hi, you two. Oh, Rachel Hoover. Hey, Rachel. Oh, hi, Rachel. <laughs> She's regular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, but but that's the point. I Thank mean, the, you. the people up here are just—I mean—so lovely and, and and such great supporters of live music and and uh, God, Selena, Selena Mac, gosh, I'm getting like celebrities on on coming on Facebook and, and watching. So this is very very <laughs> cool. sweet. Uh, the community is really what makes it special. Yes. I think to me is is uh, absolutely. I'm, we're, I'm so I'm blessed beyond words. I don't I don't know what I did in a past life to to get this. But <laughs> oh, well, for one thing, you served your country. Yeah, yeah, that was that was, yeah, that was worth it for me too. It was good. So, what I'm wondering is how we can you know you don't advertise you said as well as uh, you would like to. Yep. So how do we get these dates? Can you post some amateur musicians or if you have a website or where, where can we find you? <laughs> yes. So I, I do have a, so Instagram and Facebook, I, I, I am active on those two platforms. Um, just Tom Banger or Tom, Tom Banger, B U E N G E R. Um, Tom Banger music. If you look that up on Instagram or I have a, I have a website. It's Thomas B music. Um, I need to do a much better job about updating it. So I will, okay. um, I will, I will commit, commit to you that I will do a better job updating it. Um, Sounds like a deal. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, it's a deal. We're, we're going to do it. So, um, but I, I will say I play the, um, I've been playing the third Thursday of every month at temperate habits in downtown Mount Vernon. Okay. It's right there downtown starting in August. I'm going to make it the third Friday of the month. Yeah. And so I when, like that. What that what date is it now? Wednesday. It's the third Thursday of the month Thursday. currently. Okay. So July, you know. So I, my next gig at Temperate Habits will be July twentieth. Um, okay. I'll be there from six to eight p.m. Um, 
I'll be August 4th. I'm going to be at the Anacortes Arts Festival, I think mm-hmm. at 1145 uh, a.m. Um, and then right after that, I'm going to scoot on over to Chuckanut Bay Distillery, which is up in downtown Bellingham okay. um, from 6 to 8 p.m. So, yeah, that's August 4th. And then uh, I'll be down in Muckleteo August 19th. Um, playing the uh, music at the beach out at Muckle Teal Lighthouse Park. Um, probably doing all of those solo. So we'll yeah. we'll uh, we'll see what other opportunities come up. I I, I will I'll say my my wife is due in December. Oh, so congrats! Thank, thank you. Uh, Thirty eight years old, having our first, and uh, it's it's a little scary. Oh. So, um, so I, I've told my wife that you know once we have the baby, I'll, I'm going to double my gig load. No, I'm going to probably pull back a little bit, and. Uh, yeah, but I'll, well, you I'll probably post. won't have much sleep for a while. Yeah, exactly right. But, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna play as much as I can. I mean, I, to me, it's it's like uh, meditating. You know, it, that's my meditation when I play. It's I don't really, I don't know how you are. I mean, when you play, are you do you pay attention to the audience very much, or are you? Yeah, see, and I, I almost go the opposite way. I go into my head, and and I I, I feel like I've. I, um, you know, I, I feel like I've probably, you know, dropped something I shouldn't have. And, and I'm just, you know, in my head floating above the clouds when I play music. And then when I finish, I'm, I'm back in my body again is <laughs> cool. how, how it feels. <laughs> no, I, I always, I had a band for 15 years and country oh, wow. band. we played a variety of music, played everything, a little bit of everything back then. And, uh, I, got used to responding with the crowd because you have to be able to gauge where they're at and what kind of dance to do. I mean, what song to do next? They want to be dancing. We had a lot of dance country dance clubs come to where we played. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And you have to, right. If if, if, if people are dancing, you're not going to stop and play a slow song. You keep, (laughs) keep butts off a seat. So I, I get that too. Yeah. There was a casino called Riverside, um, in the Tukwila area, and we okay. played that, and we had the people dancing. Yeah, <laughs> and they even after we were breaking up, you know, breaking up the music uh, um, equipment and putting it away, they were still. We were playing as we break down. We would play music, and they were all in the parking lot <laughs> dancing. I love that. That sounds yeah. great. What a cool venue. Yeah, it was. It really was. Oh, well, wow. let's see where are we at here. Um, yeah, about. Uh, 13 minutes before we have to wrap it up. Wow. So I'm going to ask a question that I told you about. Um, oh, yeah. What was uh, one time or many times that you were playing and you felt, wow, I, I, this is, the, I did the right thing. It's I, all of this is worth it for me. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to that, that comment I made about feeling above the clouds. I mean, you know, this is, the job can be stressful. Um, you know, I don't own the, I don't have the market cornered on having stressful jobs, right? We've all got our stuff that, that is stressful. Um, but there's something to be said when you're playing music and you've hit a groove, whether it's by yourself or with someone else. And there's that feeling to where you're moving forward and you couldn't leave that groove. If you try, you're in it. And it's, 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 it's like riding this, this uh, musical wave and you're in control, but, but you're also just there. Um, and, and whatever, you know, you're not thinking conscious thought necessarily. Your, your subconscious is doing all the work and you're just kind of in the pocket in that groove with other musicians. Um, so that's not one time necessarily. Um, it doesn't have to be one time. It doesn't. It's it's that is when when I'm doing that, I feel like I'm as close to God as I'm as I'm going to get, you know, here in my body. So, um, you know, uh, religion or, or 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 spirituality, you know, aside, you know, whatever we want to call it. It's, it's right. there's something supernatural about what music does to the human and yes. uh, and, and getting getting into that feeling. And that's what I like about gospel. Gospel does that to me. It just gets me yeah. feeling, feeling all you know, uh, amped up and ready to go. And 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 I love sharing that with people. Um, so that's yeah. that's my long winded way of saying when I'm in. The <laughs> <room>. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I absolutely get it. Um, 
Yeah. What was the worst moment you've ever had? Is Have there been a, a worst moment? I mean, a lot of people say, no, I really haven't had anything. And oh, totally. A lot of people say, yeah, I went to this gig miles away and I got there and there are only two people in the audience. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I've done that. I mean, that's, to me, that comes with the territory. I mean, yeah. you know, um, I'll say things like going to jams, you know, I, 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 I I say, you know, you never go to a jam with any expectation. I think that's a great <laughs> rule for going to jams, right? And if you don't yeah. go with any expectation, you will not leave, you know, you, you won't leave disappointed. And oftentimes you'll leave pleasantly surprised. Yes. So jams can be hard right. at times. Um, and I've been upset with people, particularly when I was younger, before I learned that lesson where I didn't get my solo and I drove all the way out here and but, you know, I, I will say there, there was a time when I was playing piano in that classic rock band where, where you know, you have to learn, um, you have to learn how not to drink too much when you play. And, uh, yeah, right. Some lessons are learned, you know, the, the best lessons are learned the hard way. And yeah. so, yeah, I remember drinking way too much, you know, at the first half of the gig and I'm trying to play piano, but the keys are all running together. And I'm like, oh God, this is terrible. And, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I represented myself very well as a musician that night. And I think that's probably what I would say was, was my moment where, yeah. uh, you know, I limit myself to two drinks over the course of a gig. If that, if I'm playing solo, I maybe have one cause I'm too busy, but okay. um, yeah, that's probably the worst. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, we're getting really close here. Yeah. Uh, I, nine minutes. <laughs> Rose, Rose is asking when will I be around Snohomish anytime? And uh, yeah, over at the Oxford or Looking I, Glass or CCR. You know, I should. I've reached out to some of those places, and, and like I said, I, I need to up my marketing a little bit better. Um, but you know, frankly, as a musician, it starts with showing up at the the, the jams and open mics, and yeah. uh, and uh, you know, I'm up at yeah, right. And I, I'm up at four thirty or so in the morning most mornings, so th that's been a little tough. So. Um, I do want to get back to Snohomish. Um, I'm going to, I'll work with Rick Bowen or some of the folks out of the, the blue society to see if I can, I can, um, snag one of those, those down in Snohomish rows in, in, in maybe over the next few months. So I will post to this group once that happens, if that works for you. Okay. Chris does come down, um, to Snohomish Oxford every now and then, uh, yep. Richard and Chris. So, yep. No. Yeah. I, I have to, uh, I'll have to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. The guy there, um, Larry Walker is the sound man and he also does, I believe he does the booking. Um, and okay. he, if you go there to jam, uh, and he, he can hear you, uh, yeah. that's kind of like the interview. For yeah, him. sure. Yeah. And, and, and it should be. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. with, with the day job and the kid coming and stuff, I, I don't get to play music as often as I'd like. I, I do my, my monthly at temperate, I've been doing a monthly at Burleson and a monthly at, at a Chuckanut Bay distillery in Bellingham. And that's, that turns into three days a month, which <laughs> yeah. turns into a lot when you work a, a, a more than 40 hour day job, it seems. So it's going to uh, get worse when you have a young one in your house. <laughs> I know, but you know what, a any young one in our house will simply have to, uh, have to, <laughs> have to at least cope with the music. Absolutely. <laughs> so what is your five-year plan have you ever thought about what you were going to um ever thought about where you're going to be in five years from now yeah. okay, I've, like, I've asked that i've asked that question and gotten various answers that almost floored me but yeah. i still like to ask it you know I, i'll be honest musically I, i'm 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 living it like musically i'm 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 so much more happy than i i i um ever thought I could be. Uh, and, 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 and for me, it's, you know, I, I'm never going to go off and tour with Amos Lee or never, you know, that's, that's fine because I, I live in this, this home with my, you know, the, the woman I love, we're going to have a kid. I've got a job that, that treats me well. And I get to play music with just really good people. And uh, I don't have to, if they weren't, weren't good people, I would not do it. And so I, I almost, you know, I feel like I've, I've done a lot for my age and I feel like, I feel like when I come back home and do this, this is what it life really feels like. So, um, I hope to, to continue to write music. Uh, Ellen asked, are you, are you going to give it a song? And, and, and I did, I've already, I've already 
<laughs> written more than one song for her and and, and uh, my wife's only halfway through her pregnancy so um <laughs> i'm i'm going to i'm going to record that one here in the next few months and put that one out so cool. um yeah my 5 year plan is to just keep doing this because i'm blessed beyond words <laughs> and uh i just want to play music with everybody when i when i can yeah. Well, yeah, we have now about five minutes to go. So if you were going to give advice to people who are listening, yeah. uh, be they fans or other musicians, uh, what wisdom would you impart for us? Oh, you know, for me, what's worked for me is just to be authentic. And, and uh, you know, I really found my happiness when I started being authentic. Um, and that's in my music and songwriting. And, and uh, you know, we're all... I think we've all got some of that art in us and it needs to come out one way or another. And uh, right. so, you know, I don't think you need to force anything as an artist. I think if you, I think uh, as an artist, you just, you know, as you like to, as, as the kids say, you do you boo, you know, you, you just do you and, and do it authentically. And, and um, you know, um, and then, and then lift those up around you, you know, praise those around you. Cause, cause you know, you never really want to be the best musician in the room. You never want to be the best artist in the room. And so, um, you know, be kind to those who are around you because you know, that they're, they're the ones who are, who are helping you live it. So I don't know. I'm rambling a little bit, but. No, that's okay. Yeah. I, um, and the site has been scientifically proven that, you know, you use every part of your brain when you do music and it's also yeah. healing. So yeah. for people that are listening to your music, um, there's something, if you want to call it spiritual, mystical, yeah. whatever, happening between you and the audience. And, oh, yeah. and that, yeah. And that's yeah. what that's what I think it's all about. It's that interchange of of souls. When you play music, you're talking to their yeah. soul. To get to be part of like to be get to be part of, of, of the closest thing we have to magic, which is music, in my <laughs> yeah. opinion. That's the closest thing that we have tangibly to, to ma actual no kidding magic. And to get to be part of that is pretty cool, I think. I mean I you know. agree. And, and not to worry about being good or the best or better than better than so and so, just being <laughs> yeah, more <laughs> true. <what> <laughs> yeah, just being more true to whatever, you know, being more true to your craft. That's all it comes down to. Um, you know, I stopped trying to sound like the the prototypical blues harmonica player a long time ago because it was never going to happen for me anyway. And I'm yeah. I'm happier with what I've gotten, if we're being honest. So right. that's my story. That's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, Joy. <laughs> all right. I never asked you, but um, who who is your greatest influence in the music that you're listening to? Um, up up into your 21 and, and then from 21 on uh you kind of move towards the blues after a little yeah. punk experience but um who is guiding you or what were you listening to that really grabbed your your heart as a kid it was the band sublime bradley noel was the singer of the band sublime they did kind of pop ska punk stuff i um, liked punk as a kid there yeah. was a band called op ivy which is the precursor to rancid um so i liked punk and pop as a kid but once my biggest musical influence by far without question is ray charles everything ray <laughs> charles did yeah. is just wonderful and and he 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 blew through you know he he wasn't a blues musician or an r&b musician or or a country musician or a jazz musician but he, he did it all and kind of like what i said about chris everything he did was gold his country and western stuff he his jazz, his jazz chops were just in, insane. Um, Ray Charles. And then my favorite singer is Nat King Cole. Uh, Nat King Cole is the most beautiful. Uh, my beautiful. Little humble, oh, yeah. Very hill. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. So I I, 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 yeah. So those are probably my biggest musical influences. Ray Charles by far. Is Have you ever heard a song called Seven Spanish Angels by Willie Nelson mm -hmm. or Ray Charles? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Do that. Oh, I, love, yeah. I just love that. And yeah. I don't know if you know Lynn Sorensen. He was, uh -huh. um, I think, 2000 to 2008. He was the bassist for Paul Rogers and the Bad Company. Oh, cool. And he also, uh, when he was, I think, like around high school, whatever, he he played in a, in, in a symphony. And so he's wow. also a violin player. 
Oh, wow. And, and fiddle, violin fiddle. And yeah. I've been having them do that when I'm singing that song. It's, it's I, I, I can't do Ray Charles and yeah. <laughs> Willie Nelson, so I just have to do me. I'll plug up. I'll, I'll, I know with our, we're almost done, but I'll, my favorite, one of my favorite albums of all time is a country album. It's a Willie Nelson album and it's his theatro album where he, he, he basically recorded it all in this, in this theater in Oxnard, mm -hmm. California. Look, Willie Nelson theatro. It just has this haunting, <laughs> lovely vibe to it. I listen to it all the time when I want to get in my emotions a little bit. It's, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, can you, when we're over, I'm going to be sending you the YouTube. Um, okay. Oh my goodness. I, somehow when we got here, I didn't get somebody. I oh. guess I didn't get Facebook. Um, so my fans aren't going to be able to see what we did. I'm going to have to oh. repost this all over the place. I don't know why I did that. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Can you send me, I'm, I have to now probably put it in manually to YouTube. Okay. I don't even know which one is which here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, no, it doesn't show. Yeah, YouTube. I think YouTube's the only one who caught this. I apologize to people. Oh, Somebody's really? listening, but I don't know where they're listening from. Oh. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> can you send me the name of that? Uh, was it an album? Yes. Yes, it was an album. Right. Um, yes. T yep. I'll, I'll, I'll text it to you because I, yeah. Okay. I'll do so that. I'll be sending you a copy, a YouTube um, link Perfect. to this to uh, see this it'll stay Beautiful. on my channel for as long as you want and if you want your friends to get it you send them the link or just type in interview with thomas banger and it'll come up you're wonderful thanks for doing this this is a you're very great, welcome uh, yeah great I, I, it there. was a pleasure thomas it was yeah. a pleasure and i hope to go some to one of your uh, gigs i do want to see you and hear well, you awesome. yeah i'm looking forward to running into you so i, I I'm, I'm i'm thrilled all right. Thank you again. Thank you. And thank you um, for your service as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, that's it, everybody. Next week, I have um, John Cash. He's a singer songwriter. He's also the bass player and singer for uh, uh, Rodney Landert's um, Hot Rodsters. It's a country band where he does a lot of Charlie Daniels tribute. He, he does a Charlie Daniels tribute. He, that's what his band is about. So with that, uh, you all take care and I'll see you down the road. Have a good rest of your week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>